I'm really making my way through the Riot Club cast and Sam Claflin and Freddie Fox and now Josh O'Connor. <laughs> Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of My Favourite Performances. And today, I'm going to be talking about Josh O'Connor. He is a phenomenal actor, one of my absolute favourites. I've spoken about him a few times in my reviews of The Crown and Romeo and Juliet, so I'll put those links in the description and in the cards. But I thought I'd talk about some more of my favourite Josh O'Connor performances. I'm going to start with God's Own Country. His performance in this was absolutely outstanding. It blew me away because it was so different to anything else that I've seen him do. There were a lot of silences and his character is a man of few words for a lot of the film. But you don't really need words because he is so good at showing rather than telling. And you are getting the full narrative from just how he's reacting and interacting with other people. His character is quite angry and he can get quite aggressive, so at points it's quite upsetting to watch. And I just think he did a fantastic job. I was hooked to the screen the whole time. He's just such a gripping actor and, ugh, oh, the talent is immeasurable. Next up is the Durrells. I absolutely loved him in this. He plays the eldest child who is a pretentious and egocentric writer and he does it so well. <laughs> There's so many funny scenes where he's just losing it with his family because they don't appreciate the genius and it's just brilliant. I really loved this series. I binged all four seasons of it in a couple of days and his character was by far my favorite. Onto another film, it's Only You. I wasn't expecting this one to be as good as it was or I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. I thought it was going to be a fairly light romance type film but it ended up to be a really powerful drama about their relationship. His performance was so powerful and because of him it made me really root for the couple and their connection was just so brilliant and that's a common theme throughout all of his work. He creates a wonderful connection with anyone he's in a scene with. From what I've watched, he looks like an incredible actor to work with because he really actively listens and honestly responds as his character and it's just so beautiful to watch. Another film is Emma. Now, I've talked about this one before in my highlights of 2020. I absolutely loved this film. And his character was amazing. He had some really great comedic moments that just had me in stitches. I'd really love to see him do more comedy roles because from what I've seen from this and the Durrells, it looks like he would be very good at it. His character at points was so unlikable and it's happened quite a few times in things that I've seen him in. He does such a fantastic job because I'm really separating the characters from him and I'm sat there going, oh, I hate Mr. Elton. I'm like, but I love Josh. I'm so conflicted. <laughs> and finally, Hope Gap. I loved him in this because he really helped to keep my interest. I thought he was the strongest actor in it and any scene that he was in, he really stood out. Not that the others weren't good. I just feel like he was on another level. His character is just stuck in the middle of his parents' separation and acting as a mediator. And it was just such a difficult position for him to be in and I felt really bad for him. There was one scene in particular where the whole situation is really getting to him and he breaks down. And I was in tears because Josh's emotions are just so raw and it really got me. Obviously, there were so many more. I love everything that he's been in, but those were my standout favourite performances from Josh O'Connor. Next month, I'm going to be talking all about Tom Holland. So if you're a fan of his, then stay tuned for that at the start of June. Thanks for watching. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more of this. But as always, stay safe and look after yourselves. Bye.